Welcome back to Sawtooth Tactical. Today we're doing a pretty fun video. This is actually a viewer requested video. As you guys probably know, I read all the comments. In fact, I reply to every comment. And I've had multiple people comment that they want me to do a video showcasing my entire gun collection. And so here is that video today. We will go over every gun that you see behind me, including some more on the table in front of me and briefly talk about the details the uh you know what i've done to each one and the setup and um try to keep the video from getting too long but uh make sure you're subscribed and let's get started so what i'm going to try to do is to go in the order that i acquired these and maybe you'll see some kind of progression as to how my tastes have changed and just the quality of the firearms in general Although some of the ones I got early on, like the first one, are also some of my favorites. Now, some of my early poor decisions I have sold. So if there's some that you remember from when the channel started that aren't here, is what it is. The one we're going to start with is my Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0. And you may notice that it is missing an optic right now. Well, that is because I had this, opt or this slide cut for a Holosun 407K. It was my first pistol optic. And I, I bought the cheapest good optic I could get, which was the Holosun 407K. And so that's what I got the slide cut for. That optic is now on my P365. We'll get into that. But I do have a Holosun EPS coming for this because it shares the K footprint. So look forward to that video. But this is the four and a quarter inch Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0. I put the Apex flat face trigger in it, which is the best striker fired trigger that I've used. It's also got a Streamlight TLR1 HL. And when I had the slide cut for the optic, I got it Cerakoted Midnight Bronze. And although I got this pistol very early on in my gun collecting career, it is still one of my very favorites. In fact, this is my current bedside gun and has been for a long time. It's an awesome pistol. So the next one is also a Smith & Wesson. It's also an M&P. This is an M&P 15 Sport 2, although I know it doesn't look like it. I promise you it really is. This was my first AR-15. And it's gone through a lot of changes, but currently what it has, probably the thing that makes it look most not like an M&P 15 Sport 2 is the Aero Precision Atlas R1 15 inch handguard. It's got a muzzle brake on it. This one has the O-Light before I learned better about lights, but it works and it just keeps working. So also it's spray painted. I painted the whole thing myself, rattle canned it, and I think it looks awesome. It's got the SIG Tango MSR 1-6 LPVO with a go to our red dot that was sent to me for review that's been awesome. And so I've had no reason to take that off either. I really like the LPVO with the offset red dot setup. This one has Palmetto State Armory flat face single stage trigger in it. And it's a pretty decent trigger, honestly. B5 Systems Bravo stock. You will see, I put that on pretty much all my guns. I love this B5 stock. Mission first tactical pistol grip. I've got the Magpul grip up front. And that is about all I need to say about this rifle. Very first AR I ever got. The second AR I ever got, I wanted something a little shorter. So this is a Palmetto State Armory, 11 and a half inch AR. It was a pistol. It has since been SBR'd, hence the B5 Bravo stock and the BCM vertical foregrip. This one didn't cost a lot of money and it's treated me really well. It's a great gun. It really is. It's got the Strike Industries King Comp underneath the oppressor flash can here. Like I said, this was early on. I've learned a lot since then, but if it works, it works. And that muzzle device really tames the recoil of this 11 and a half inch so it's staying on there it's got a light from crimson trace 
Sig Romeo 5 with the Juliet 3 Micro with the flip to side mount. This one's got a binary trigger in it. It's the Fostec Echo Trigger, which has been upgraded with a, a different bushing and a spring in it. And so it runs really fast. And even in semi-automatic, it's like a two pound pull and it's super light and smooth. So can't complain there. Radian Raptor charging handle. These are on all of my ARs. But this 11 and a half inch gun has been pretty awesome. I believe the next one I got would have been this. This is a Springfield Ronin 1911. Again, pretty much everything you're gonna see here, a condiment theme that I do like to customize and change things up. This did come with wood grips, but lock grips sent me these to review. And I liked them so much, I kept them on here. It's a five inch, nine millimeter 1911. I've owned a number of Springfield 1911s and they've been great guns. This one did have some issues. It kind of needed a lot of a break in period, but now that it's broken in, it runs great. And a nine millimeter, five inch 1911 has such little recoil, it's just a joy to shoot. I got this AK a couple years ago. This is a 1967 Romanian GP Wasser 1063. And I love this AK. It's not all tactic cooled out like all my ARs. And that is kind of the point. I wanted a classic looking AK. I got it used. Came with a bayonet among other things, a bunch of magazines. The only real modification I've done to this one is put the ALG AKT trigger in it. Uh, just because I'm a trigger snob, I love good triggers. I've got some Geisley triggers, Geisley and ALG, basically the same company. And uh, this trigger is just fantastic. If you have an AK and you're gonna do one thing to it, get the ALG trigger. Other than that, just a very classic looking wood furniture AK. Super reliable, and I absolutely love this thing. I've been carrying a Sig Sauer P365 for a long time. And the only modification I had done to it was the Wilson Combat Grip Module. Well, that is all changing right now. If you follow the channel, you probably know this. I kind of alluded to it in a video a few weeks ago about how I didn't feel super confident with my carry gun. And the great thing about the P365 is you can take the fire control unit out and put whatever grip modules and slides you want. So. It just became a P365 XL yesterday. I put the Holosun 407K that was on my M&P on here, but this is gonna go through a bunch more changes. I've got parts in the mail right now, and this will be the next build series. But I feel like just that little bit bigger slide, a little bit bigger grip, a little bit more capacity will make this a gun that I feel a little bit more confident carrying even though it might be a little bit harder to conceal. I also did get, this is the X macro slide with the integrated comp. So we're gonna take it to the range this weekend and see if that makes a difference or not. So stay tuned for that video coming very soon and the beginning of the next build series. The AR9 pistol caliber carbine. This was my first AR15 build, you know, with the m and I basically changed out everything on this gun and it gave me a taste for, you know, customization and all that. Well, it also made me feel confident enough to start building ARs, which I've built a number of them now, but this was the very first one. If you remember the build series, it's an Aero Precision EPC-9 upper, lower, and bolt uh, with the Aero Precision Atlas R1 handguard. It's got a ballistic advantage barrel, Sig Romeo 5 red dot. This one is SBR. It's got the B5 Bravo stock and the BCM grip. And with these uh, Glock stick mags, this thing is just a blast to shoot. You know, nine millimeters is a lot cheaper than 5.56. And you can shoot steel up closer with it. So it's a great training aid. But besides that, it's just a ton of fun. It's got a Rise Armament PCC trigger in it and a Radian Raptor charging handle, of course. And this trigger is just fantastic. Also, the Radian Talon Ambi Safety. 
you will see that theme as well. I put the Radian safety selector and charging handle on all my ARs. This, my only revolver, was given to me by a good friend, Dan Rinner. Thank you, Dan. Uh, this is a Heritage Rough Rider 22 long rifle, single action only revolver. And uh, it's my only 22 as well. Uh, my daughter loves to shoot this thing. I love to shoot this thing. It's super accurate. It's just casual, fun shooting. A 22, everyone should have one. One that looks like a cowboy gun is just a bonus. It's modeled after Colt Single Action Army. Looks just like it, but instead of 45 long Colt, 22 long rifle. This was the second AR that I built. And we did a whole build series on this as well. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend going back and watching the entire series. But this is my short 300 Blackout home defense build. Again, SBR'd with the B5 Bravo stock. It's got an Aero Precision M4E1 upper and lower receiver with an Aero Precision nickel boron bolt carrier group. I've got a Roscoe. 416R stainless steel barrel in here, whip machine and tool dirty 30 suppressor, Streamlight Protec HLX weapon mounted light on an Arasaka offset mount, Hollow Sun 512C optic, which I highly recommend. Gives you most of the benefits of an EOTech with that big window and the circle dot reticle, but also most of the benefits of a red dot with shake awake and a longer battery life and stuff like that. Again, Radian Talon Safety, Radian Raptor Charging Handle, and this one has the Geisley SSP trigger in it, which is their single stage precision trigger, and it is a really, really good single stage trigger. 300 Blackout is a great home defense round. This thing will run supersonic or subsonic rounds reliably, and it won't kill my hearing if I ever have to use it indoors. It's also nice and short and maneuverable for CQB, which is what home defense is. Moving around the house with this thing is nice and easy. The next build series we did was this. This was the Gucci Glock on a budget build. I built this on a Palmetto State Armory dagger frame and flat dark earth, but I did switch out the trigger for a Timney Alpha trigger. This trigger is for a Glock trigger. It's fantastic, and that's what this is. The PSA Dagger is a Gen 3 Glock 19 clone. It takes Glock magazines. I mean, it'll even take these magazines if you want it to. That's one of the great things about Glock, the Glock platform. So, Glock magazines. I did kind of do some things to it. The cool thing about the PSA Dagger is all the customizable options that you can get right from PSA for not a whole lot of money. So I got the slide here with the window cuts in it, the titanium nitride threaded barrel, you know, suppressor height sights, actually one third lower co-witness sights in fact. Um, this one again, TLR1 HL light. I really like this light. You know, you'll see another theme. I've got it on a bunch of my pistols. I do have a streamlight coming for the EDC as well, but not this one. It's kind of big for carrying. Um, this did have a Hollow Sun 407C on it, um, but I've used this pistol to test a lot of the optics that have been sent to me for review. At one point, it had a Sealy Bear enclosed uh, red dot on it. Right now, it's got the Fox Army FXA 10. Um, you know, great thing about the uh, the dagger from Palmetto State Armory is you can get your slide cut direct milled for an RMR footprint, which a lot of optics use that footprint. And so I've been able to use this gun to test a bunch of optics on, and it's been very reliable, and it's my Glock. The biggest thing though, the most important change on the whole thing, and I know it seems small, is the mag release here. This is the Glock Store Teardrop Extended Mag Release. Uh, the Gen 3 Glocks, I hate the magazine release on them. Um, and this fixes that. It's easy to get to without breaking your grip. It feels great. It doesn't poke into my finger or anything. I highly recommend this. 
if you have a Gen 3 Glock or a Gen 3 Glock clone, that's the Glock Store Teardrop Extended Mag Release. They've got it in like a bunch of colors. I got gold because it matched the barrel. But yeah, this is my Gucci Glock on a budget. After the PSA dagger, might as well show my actual Glock. This is a Glock 19X, and I think this is my only gun that's not modified in any way. Well, probably the revolver too. But the 19X is, I think, my favorite Glock, or the Glock 45. Um, you get a full-length Glock 17 size grip with a Glock 19 size slide and barrel. So it's a four inch barrel with what would take 17 round magazines, but you actually get 19 round magazines with the 19X. It comes in a nice peanut butter FDE color. It actually has decent metal sights on it instead of the crappy plastic sights that most Glocks come with. Um, other than that, it is a very standard Glock. Regular Glock trigger, heavy, squishy, but reliable. And I just haven't done anything to this gun because for some reason I feel like I should just have a stock Glock that I know is gonna run, and that's what this does. Maybe someday we'll get it milled, put a red dot on it, Maybe we'll get the Glock performance trigger because I do kind of feel like that's still a stock Glock since it is a Glock OEM part. But for now, I'm happy with it the way it is. Super reliable and it's a pretty easy gun to shoot well. Before the last two guns, we'll mention the honorable mention here. The reason it's an honorable mention is because technically this isn't really mine. A friend of mine owns this, loaned it to me a long time ago. And I've just been in possession of it ever since. I think he wants me to do some work on it for him. Well, in fact, I know he wants me to. And I know what I would like to do with it, but I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> so at some point, this will probably get the ALG trigger. But what this is, is a Sentry Arms Romanian Draco. So very similar to the Wasser there, except that it's basically a pistol instead of a rifle. Now, this is, in my opinion, the right size of Draco to have. Although a Draco in this configuration, to me, is about worthless. Um, you know, if you take this thing out to the range, and you take this AK, and you shoot this one, and then you put some rounds through this one, you're not going to want to shoot this one anymore. It's just, without a stock, it's really hard to keep it under control, shooting 762 by 39 out of such a small weapon. And therein lies the issue with the Draco. Now what I think this needs, again, is the ALG trigger, but it needs to be SBR'd and get a triangle folding stock on it, and then this thing would be awesome. So if I can convince my friend who actually owns this to go through the process of the NFA and SBR this thing, then I'll be putting that triangle folder, ALG trigger, and we'll make this Draco into something to be proud of and something that's actually fun to shoot. And now we come to my very favorite pistol that I own. This is my Springfield Prodigy. And this one, again, is customized like a lot of the guns that I own. But the Springfield Prodigy in itself, in its stock configuration, is a fantastic pistol. I put a thousand rounds through this before I had any work done to it, and it was perfectly reliable the entire time in its stock configuration. I did, of course, add a Holosun 407C Red Dot, Streamlight TLR1 HL Light, because it's a great light, and a great Red Dot. And they're not super expensive, either of those two parts, but they're high quality. So then I send it off to Skip's Guns. Make sure you follow him on YouTube if you haven't already. He has a channel, but he also has a business modifying 2011s. And so I had him put uh, new internals in this. It's got EGW internals. Um, so none of the MIM metal injection molded parts that come in the Springfield Prodigy are in here anymore. It's got an Atlas flat face trigger that is tuned to 2.4 pounds and just as crisp and light as can be. And it's got an eight pound recoil spring. It's got a lightened main spring. And it's been 100% reliable without a single failure or issue of any kind since I got it back from Skip. 
but it just feels that much more like a 2011 should feel. You can air rack this thing now if you want to. Although, still not the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, I have done it, it can be done. Um, it's just super smooth, super light. It feels, it just feels good. Everyone that picks this gun up and shoots it, loves it and wants to go buy one. And you will too. I highly recommend the Springfield Prodigy. I know they had some issues when they first came out, but Springfield has fixed those issues. I waited about a year after the release to get mine, and mine has been perfectly reliable, and it is the most fun pistol that I have to shoot. And last but certainly not least is the Dream Rifle build. This is my most recent build. I hope you guys all caught the series we did on this. If you haven't, please go back and watch it. Definitely worth checking out. But again, I built this AR, bought every single part, picked out every single part, literally to the smallest parts. It's got an FCD um, buffer retainer pin. Um, it's literally got exactly what I wanted. I didn't care what it cost. I wanted to build my dream gun and I did. It's got the ADM UIC Ambi low receiver with an Ambi bolt release and catch, Ambi mag release. Plus it just looks absolutely beautiful. It's got the Geisley SDE trigger, super dynamic enhanced two-stage trigger. And this thing is just fantastic. Super smooth, light, crisp, everything that you want a trigger to be. Of course, going with everything else, Radian Raptor, Radian Talon. This one's got a Voltor MUR modular upper receiver which is really cool because the forward assist is farther forward so it doesn't get in the way of your charging handle. It's also got thicker walls. It's just super reliable, super high quality upper receiver. As you can see, a BCM bolt carrier group, forward controls EPC or ejection port cover, forward controls uh, panel for my cable management there for the ModLite PLH V2 uh, with the surefire tail cap, the mod button. I've got a Roscoe 14 and a half inch mid-length barrel with a pinned and welded silencer coat ASR three pong flash hider, which is also a suppressor mount. Suppressor will be coming for this. It's got the Geisley Mark 8 handguard, OD green. You can see the theme of the build was OD green. It's got the emissary handbrake, B5 systems grip and stock. EOTech on the Unity riser with the G33 magnifier on the flip to center mount. Literally everything that I wanted in a rifle, I put into this one and I couldn't be happier with it. After a little bit of buffer tuning, the thing is perfectly reliable, super soft shooting, and everyone that's into ARs, building guns, into guns at all, should build yourself your dream rifle at some point. It's very satisfying. And uh, it's just a great feeling when you build something yourself, pick out all the parts exactly how you want them, and then take it to the range. And you get to use that tool and it's, you know, nobody else has one like it but you. And that's what this one is to me. I absolutely love this thing. So I know that this video went on longer than I planned. It's hard to keep all these to just a minute when you're going through all these guns. This is my current gun collection at the end of 2023. I'm sure that will change by the end of 2024, especially with doing this YouTube channel. I just love to bring you guys new and exciting things. And I have a gun buying and building addiction. I'm sure many of you can relate. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, hit that like button, share it with anybody that you know that loves Firearms and the Second Amendment, and from Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped.